what's up everybody it's your girl jojo and i'm here with the review for ready to love season three episode y'all know i don't know the episode number but listen we got a lot to talk about today i know i say it every week but look at these notes baby look at these notes okay we got a lot to talk about they threw in some curveballs i'm not even go, gonna go in the order of the episode i'm gonna go in the connections we're gonna just talk about the connections okay the last year was the journey this year is the connections we're gonna talk about the connections i'm not gonna necessarily go in the order of the show because sometimes even that got a little confusing um this will probably not be uploaded until later on saturday evening maybe about six o'clock because even though it's only one o'clock now by the time i edit and get it uploaded it's going to be a lot later so yeah i got some errands to run before five so i'm sorry y'all i'm sorry forgive me and no i still haven't watched put a ring on it i'm gonna have to watch that later on tonight and hopefully get it uploaded on sunday i apologize i'm doing i'm doing my best y'all i really am so the control is with the gentleman and this week, Nephew Tommy wants them to go deep, go deeper. Reveal a side of yourself that the women haven't seen and watch how they respond. Don't y'all like when Tommy be talking? He he act like he's so deep with it. Um, let's talk about Edwin and his connections. So we'll start with Naya. <sighs> Him and Naya are by the pool having them a cute little whatever it is. And um, they're laughing and talking. Um, the subject of Chris does come up. We find out that Chris has actually gotten off social media. And we find out because Naya solicited Joy to get in touch with Chris. Because Chris was supposed to be helping Naya with a podcast. I said, baby, this is a not my girl's moment. This is a not my girl's moment. For those of you who are new to JoJo's channel, a not my girl's moment is a moment where... I know that my girl, even though Naya is not my friend, you know, I still look at women as my girl. I know that my girl knows better than to be pulling the shenanigans that she's trying to pull. Why would you think at any part of the show that somebody you dismiss the way that Chris was dismissed? Because you did dismiss him. Once you find out he didn't have what you wanted and you was well within your right to want what you wanted, it's the way you behaved. Once you did that, why would you think that he would want to help you with your podcast? Like you, you pretty much told him like, I wasn't ever interested in you, even though you was offering your eggs on a silver platter. I wasn't interested in you. I'm not interested in you, but I still want you to help me with my podcast. Cause you know, we're still friends, but you didn't, you didn't even treat him like a friend. So no, no, Naya, I know you know better than that. I know, you know, it's so many, not my girls moments this episode, y'all. That was one of them. Okay. Later on in the date, she is looking at Edwin's feet and seeing what size shoe he wear. Apparently, he wear a 10 and a half. And ladies, now, I thought... I thought that that whole theory had went out the window. Are we back on the feet? Because I thought it was about the hands. Somebody told me that if you take your hand and you go from this finger down to the bottom of the hand, that gives you more of an idea of what the size is going to be. Y'all correct me now, ladies. I don't know what we're looking at no more. If we back to the feet... I need to know what's going on. But hey, if we on the hands, don't sleep on them little hands. Now, I told y'all about that dude. I told y'all about the guy that he was like 5'4", five, 5'3", five, he was short. Okay. <laughs> don't sleep on them baby hands. They be real nimble and quick. <laughs> Later on, they're sitting on the couch at a different part of the episode. And Nia Naya, I always, is, which one is it? She is bringing up... Um, the home stuff again and stuff that she wants to do in the home and what she wants to tend to and then what she wants the man to take care of while she's taking care of these things in the home and i don't know if edwin got uncomfortable but it seemed like the subject shifted and he was telling her how pretty her eyes were and how they were very cat-like and i was just like well that was this is kind of awkward like does he not want to talk about it anymore and uh naya makes a comment yeah it all matches pretty eyes pretty kitty i don't know i was just i I don't know. I was just like, what is going on right here? I was kind of uncomfortable, but I know sexual innuendo happens during dates, but I, I was just, yeah, I don't know. And then, you know, Edwin got them braces. I don't know if I want all that hardware down there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I had adult braces too, okay? It's just a joke. Nobody take it personal. All right, let's move on. So, uh, we'll stay with Edwin's connections. We're going to move on to the date that he had with Joy. Now, this date went okay. Um, 
I can't tell if I felt like Joy was 100% comfortable or she wasn't. What do y'all think? I felt like there were moments where she was, but then I was just like, is she feeling it? I think she was feeling it. I think so. I think so. Y'all let me know what y'all think. But they're going to do some tantric yoga. And I've always wanted to do tantric yoga, you guys. I remember I had asked... Oh my gosh, I had to ask my boyfriend one time. I was like, let's do like tantric yoga. I want to go do tantric yoga. And he was just like, what is that? I said, y'all, y'all be so uncultured. <laughs> but I really wanted to do that. The only thing about it is, while I see that it was something different and sensual, I don't, I feel like tantric yoga is something that I would want to do with somebody I've been with for a while. Not somebody that I met and I'm trying to see if we're gonna take it to that next level, but I guess Joy didn't seem too bothered by it. And it wasn't too bad. Like, they weren't getting, like, you know, tantric, tantric yoga can really go there. It wasn't like that. Um, you know, they leaned on each other. And everyone was like, this is the way that you can lean on me and depend on me. You know, it was getting real deep. And then, you know, they leaned the other way. And he kind of grabbed her, grabbed her down by the hip butt area, you know, and was squeezing. I guess he was squeezing because... um you know, that's how they get grounded. I was like, okay, Edwin, don't don't ground yourself too much now. Y'all know how we get when they first when they first put their hand on the booty and you kind of got to act like, uh, excuse you. <laughs> don't be touching on me, even though, you know, I'm not going to say nothing too loud. <laughs> the date went okay. I mean, I, I still don't know what her level of comfortable was, but it seemed like I guess she was pretty comfortable. Only thing I'll say about Joy is, is it her hair or is it a wig? I don't care what it is. I wanted a shaped. I wanted to shape it. Just it cut her. It swallows her face. Like when they were doing the yoga, it just seemed like something was just like this the whole time. And I just wanted it like, I just wanted it out. I just wanted it out the way. Yeah, the date was cool. Um, Edwin seems to be getting a lot closer to Joy, um, in my opinion. And I still want to know what happened with him in winter and this whole yelling situation that y'all was talking about in the comments. Um, is that it for Edwin? I think that's it. Moving on. So next I want to talk about Winter. Now Winter understands the process. So she said, so she says, I got my retainer in. But when she goes out with Jay, she lets Jay know that she's still a little bit uncomfortable about the connection that he has with Joy. I don't think you fully understand the process because if you did, you would not be getting in your feelings in this way. And we're going to talk more about that later on, but it always happens around episode six or seven. The ladies start to get, um, uncomfortable with how the process works. Um, but she says that she's still trying to move forward. And even Jay says, listen, you got to be comfortable with the connection that we have together and you can't really be worried about what's going on with everybody else, but this is how the process works. That's how dating work too, to be honest. And if you can't, you know, you can't handle it. You gotta, you gotta get yourself out the game or get with somebody who's ready to be just as serious as you are and pretty much walk off the show. Those are pretty much your only, um, options, but Winter says she going to keep her options too. And she going to be moving forward, which she should have been doing from the very beginning. Um, and I will say that is one of my biggest mistakes while dating. Um, a huge mistake. I don't think I have a whole lot of younger ladies who watch my show, but if I do, do not make that mistake. Um, do not make the mistake of being loyal to someone who is not loyal to you. If they're dating, you're dating. All right. Until you guys call it and decide to cut off everybody who you might be dealing with, continue to date, continue to explore your options. Doesn't mean you got to bust it wide open for everybody because for some reason that's a misconception. Everybody you go on dates with, you're having sex with, you don't have to do that, but continue to date, continue to meet people, continue to explore. Do not hold yourself up for anybody who has not told you that you are a woman. And yes, they need to tell you, don't assume. Next, we move on to the Tiki date. Okay, it was Rashid and... Nope, it was Calfani and Adriana. I'm gonna talk about them later. And then it was Winter and Brian. Winter looked uncomfortable. I think she thinks Brian is cute, but she's not feeling him like that. Um, Brian is giving her the, y'all know how Brian do. He gives her beard and, you know, the sexy eye. And that works for some people, but it's not really working for Winter. The whole date was just awkward. I don't see it for the two of them. She asked Brian what um, he liked about her. And he was just like, um... You know, I, I like your swag. I like your style. Your thick thighs save lives. I said, Jesus, help us, please. 
Thick thighs save lives, Brian, really. I mean, I appreciate all that as a thick thigh girl myself. But she asked you what you liked about her. Not all of this. Although, Winter, I thought you could appreciate the word swag. You know, that's your word. But I'm just like, he is not feeling her like that. This date was pointless. We're all uncomfortable watching it. And then he would get close to her and he would try to hold. I was just like, ugh. Just stop it. Brian trying to find some other options because him and Alex is not as strong as he thought they were going to be. And I will talk about them. I'll go ahead and talk about them next, actually. <clears throat> Brian and Alex are sitting on the couch. And Alex got that look like, have y'all ever had that look like where you going out with your man, but you didn't really feel like going out that day? You kind of went out because you knew he needed to go out and impress his coworkers. So you just kind of sitting there like this. And then Brian ended up tapping her and was like, hey, you want to go over here and talk? And she just like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 whatever, where, where we going? So when they get over there to talk, Alex opens up and says that due to the relationship she was in that was abusive, it definitely does take her a while to open up. And yes, something has shifted, but she can't quite put her finger on what it is. Um, but she just wants him to know where the wall that her friend mentioned that she might have up. She wanted Brian to know where that wall is coming from. Brian responds with, I, I don't know if he was trying to make a joke to make her more comfortable, but to me, it, it came off as disingenuous and it came off as like, it did come off like he was just trying to make a joke when she was trying to open up to him about something that she had been through. So she wasn't really feeling it. She was even like, what, what are you talking about? And then he tried to change it and he was like, well, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I don't really, I don't really know you that well. And like, you don't really know me. And I, I don't, Brian, I, I, I don't think Brian's ready. I just don't think he's ready. I think it's too much fluff. I think it's too many, um, you know, words that don't really mean anything. Um, sometimes he's misusing words that he got out of the, <laughs> the dictionary. I just don't think he's ready. And I think Alex is starting to feel that now. Um, Alex also goes on a date with Rashid. Y'all know Rashid always is good with opening up about his life. And they both talk about... Uh, things that have gone on in their lives. She also opens up to us about her mom and how her dad is now her mother's primary caretaker. And she respects that. He was like, yeah, that's that's dope. That's what a man does. He, he took care of his woman when she was down. And I mean, that's great. And I'm pretty sure you look for certain qualities in a man when you think about your dad and all of the things that he's done for you and the things that he's done for your mother and the sacrifices he's made. So they did get deep. They did have... Um, a deeper conversation. I don't think Alex is interested in Rasheed like that, but it was cool to see Rasheed on another date. I said, Rasheed about to come through the back door and try to steal everybody girl in just a minute. Um, but that was cool, but I don't think anything is going to come of it. But overall, I, I think, I, I don't think Brian is ready and not sure if Alex is either. <sighs> y'all can let me know what y'all thought about those two. We're going to move on. Adriana. Um, Adriana and Calfani are spending a lot of time together this episode. I told y'all they were on the tiki boat with Winter and Brian. They are getting very close and very cuddly. And um, when Winter asks, what do you guys like about me and Adriana? Calfani says that he likes the fact that she's very bubbly. He loves her energy and she's very fun. Meanwhile, y'all know Brian was over there with the thick thigh saved lives comment. We already talked about that. Who he bombed. He bombed for that day. Um, also, you know, later on, Calfani and Adriana are playing a little checkers, having a good time, and uh, enjoying one another. I still feel like Adriana has more of a physical connection with Calfani than she does like a genuine connection. Rashid walks by, he sees them playing checkers. Rashid is just like, hey, I'm comfortable in my position. I feel like I've made a good impression on Adriana. She know what it is. I'm not worried about it. I said, good job, Rashid. We love a confident man. On the flip side, we got Denise. I said, baby, not my girls. <laughs> not my girls. So, Calfani and Adriana are talking on the couch. And, like, she is all the way laid. I mean, they, they kick back now. It's, it's real cozy. And she's asking him why he's single. And he says that he just keeps meeting the wrong type of women. So Denise walks by, you know, in some type of glam, you know, she kind of glammed up for it to just be a general day and just walking around the house. So she walked by and she looking at them like, oh, okay. And she's laughing, <laughs> right? 
But it's not the laugh where you're genuinely amused. It's one of them laughs like they really want me to go off on both of them. She goes in the kitchen and she's making a drink. And Denise says that Adriana is trying to get under her skin. And while I, while I do... I, I do agree with Denise. I also feel like this is kind of the name of the game. People are going to date each other. And you got to be confident. Just like Rasheed said, he planned his position. He knows where he stands with Adriana, or at least he hopes. I want you to do the same thing, Denise. Don't be walking around there letting these brothers know they got you riled up. But she in the kitchen, you know, mumbling to herself and kind of looking like, huh, these folks got me messed up. They got me confused, honey. I am Denise, and I do not play that. I do think Adriana, while she likes Calfani, she also knows that this is getting Denise aggravated because she outside talking about, is everything okay? I said, girl, you know everything is not okay. You better stop playing with me, Adriana. So um, Denise walks by again and she was like, keep it cute. I don't know if that was for Calfani, Adriana, or both. <laughs> but I felt like it was a threat. <laughs> Denise go back to her room. Now she in her track suit. Calfani comes in there and he's just like, I'm gonna have to talk to Denise because I don't like that. I don't play that. I don't have nobody checking me, telling me what to do. I'm gonna do what I need to do in this house. It's all a part of the process. So she got to cool it. So he goes in there and he lets her know that. And Denise is just like, I understand the process. Yes. This is how she look at y'all. I, I, yeah, I know. I understand that. So what, I'm not supposed to show my feelings? I'm not supposed to show my feelings towards you? I'm not supposed to show you how I feel? And Calfani was like, yeah, you can show me how you feel, but there's still a way to go about it. And you still have to understand that I'm still engaging in this process. I'm still seeing the possibilities. And what's attractive to me and what works for me is a woman who is secure and confident in what we have with each other. And that's how I want you to be. And Denise is just like, mm -hmm. okay, so what? I'm, I'm just not supposed to show how I feel. <laughs> But I do want Denise to feel solid in her connection. Don't let Adriana get you riled up because that's who's really getting her riled up. And you don't want to blow it, you know, just because of something that is going up. Just be confident. Be confident in what the two of you, what the two of you have. But yeah, y'all, it was funny. Don't show your hand though. Don't show your hand, Denise. <laughs> Later on by the pool, Denise got sage, you know, because she got to sage everybody. <laughs> I said, do she want to be an actress? Because she really got me cracking up. And then another time you saw her over there reading a book, y'all. And the name of the book, let me go ahead and plug this book in real quick. The name of the book is called Pussy Prayers. It's $9.99 on Amazon. <laughs> I went and looked it up for those of you women who saw the book and was interested. I believe that the book to me is kind of like a... um like a more modern day or maybe a more um, millennial type focused um, book of, um, I don't want to say watered down, but maybe a, a milder version of um, Queen of Fooey's the, the Sacred Woman. Is it a Sacred Woman? Um, and she also has one called uh, Angry Vagina. Y'all can check them out too. Queen of Fooey, yes, A F O. I think it's A-F-O-U-E, y'all. Um, but if y'all want to check out Pussy Prayers, it's $9.99 on Amazon. Oh, that Denise cracked me up this episode, for real. I don't want her to be acting like that, y'all, because she has no ownership over Calfani, just like Adriana doesn't have any ownership over Rashid. You guys, it's not all bets are off once you decide you like somebody. And if y'all had that conversation, obviously somebody didn't stick to the code. Um, Rasheed went on a date with Simone that I absolutely loved. I thought the date was creative. Um, I thought the date was cute. Uh, Simone was giving us foot action. And I know some of y'all down in the comments like that. I ain't gonna call no names, but some of y'all like the feet. <laughs> they know who they are. Um, they talk about a hard time in his life where he was in special education. He said he was embarrassed about it, but his mom worked hard. They worked with him. He ended up going to college, um, ended up graduating with honors, um, ended up getting on the right reading level and all of the things that he had to do. Um, Simone was the one who actually asked him out. So they actually talked about that. And he said he appreciated her confidence and her boldness because sometimes as a man, it does get hard, you know, you. Sometimes you want the woman to, to maybe make that first step, but I like how you still step back and let me decide and let me plan the date and let me plan what we were going to do together. I was like, okay, I was feeling it. And let me say, I was proud of Simone um, for stepping up and doing that. I know some women, that's not our style, but <clears throat> I was cool with it because a couple of weeks ago, Simone was crying and 
um, really upset about the fact that Joy and Winter seemed to have a level of femininity that she did not possess. They were very coy. They were very soft. They were very dainty. And she didn't have that. And this just goes to show that you still, even in your femininity, there still has to be a way that it works for you. You can't pretend and put on airs to be anybody else but yourself. And it still worked for Simone. You know, even though it was more assertive than a Joy or a Winter would be, um, it still was very sexy and very confident and very attractive. I was feeling it, you know. I was I was glad she did it because I was getting worried about sis. And it was a cute date. I thought they, child, I thought it was cute. What y'all thought? I know some of y'all don't care for Simone, so. <laughs> but I thought it was a cute date. I, I I thought they had some chemistry. I said, Adriana, why you over there being real lusty? We're going to talk about her again. Simone might be sneaking in the back door. Although Simone says that. She was one of Rasheed's top picks from the very beginning. I wasn't getting that vibe from this episode. It seemed like she became one of his top picks as they went about the date. But yeah, I mean, maybe so. But I just didn't see it from the way that this was edited. All right. So who else? I told you Rasheed went out with Adriana, went out with Alex. Mm -mm. I'm going through all these notes. There's so many of them. Winter went on a date with Anthony. I don't know why people keep forgetting about Anthony, but Winter says, um, you know, I really noticed that Anthony was working with something in that top and he had on his shorts and he got a body, I said, Winter. Now, you wasn't okay with Brian talking about your thick thighs saved lives. You said he was being superficial. You being superficial over here with Anthony, but I mean, I guess we're not going to talk about that, huh? All right, is, is it a not my girl's moment or no? Because you was being superficial too. I'm tired of y'all just wanting Anthony for his body because he's smart too. He got it up here too. But they go on a cute little date. I mean, I don't know if I feel any chemistry with Winter and Anthony, but I, the conversation was just okay for me. Um, I'm hoping that Anthony doesn't end up getting voted off, but for some reason, I feel like he might. Um, Winter opens up more about her divorce and things that she went through and how she's just ready to, she's just ready to be there for somebody. I, I, I kind of felt that. I kind of felt that when she said it. So the date was cool. I just don't know if anything's going to come of it. Now, let's move on to uh, the table, y'all. They go to the dinner table and somehow a little freestyle battle gets started and it's real cute. You know, it starts with Naya and then it moves on to Simone. And y'all, I was kind of cleaning up and trying to straighten up some stuff, but I was listening to the episode when it got to this part. And I took my eyes off the phone for just a minute during the freestyle battle. And next thing I know, all I hear is creep and we crawl, ball till we ball, in the parking lot and then and something hunt the mall. Got me some cuties, they all some beauties. When they turn around, they might have the big booty. Calfani, baby, why is you yelling? <laughs> Why are you yelling, Calfani? Calfani said, listen, I don't know who turn it is, but I'm going to go ahead and step in because I got the flow. I got the mic. I got to spit out these hot bars right now. Something tells me that Calfani has a blue notebook at his house full of his raps and rhymes from high school. He was over there in bus holding, you know, in the back while somebody was rapping over the Uchi Wally beat, getting in his freestyle battles because he was about that life for real. It wasn't even his turn. <laughs> Y'all, I was so alarmed at what was going on. And you can tell the whole cast was confused. Like, even they was just like, oh, oh, okay, okay. Let's let's get with it, Calfani. Got some bars he want to spit. Everybody but Alex. I mean, Alex was over there, child, effing up with whatever was in that dessert, dessert plate. She was like, you better be eating. That would probably be me over there. But yeah, I was just like, Calfani, what? What is going on here? You really had, that sound like something he been wanting to say. Creep and we crawl. <laughs> Okay, we creeping and crawling, no problem. That's what we gonna do because that's what you told us to do. All right, fine. Oh, child. Y'all, I did that like three or four times. I know I don't have all the words right because I couldn't really understand what he was saying. I had to rewind it like six or seven times. All right, um, right, let's move on. So because Calfani has, you know, hit you with the creep and we crawl, Adriana is feeling some type of way, okay? She feel like he real sexy now. You know, she didn't even know where he came from with all of that. I was just like, this child is about silly as she want to be. But they share a very, uh, I, dare I say, I think I saw some tongue, honey, in that kiss. It was, 
It was serious. And then she had the yellow, you know, sunshine shorts. The booty was out. It's a lot going on already. The love child. So later on, gentlemen meet up because it's time to decide who's going to go home. And they share their experiences on their date. And Rasheed brings up the fact that Alex opened up to him about his her mother and the car accident situation and how her dad has been taking care of things and how she looks for the man. Y'all know all of that. And uh, nephew Tommy looked at Brian and said, Brian, did you know that? And Brian said, well, no, I, I didn't know that. He said, okay, well, are you paying attention to her when she talks to you? Are you listening to what she has to say? And um, he was like, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, maybe not as much, but I've been. Then he asked, what about the connection between the two of you? Is it growing stronger or is it growing weaker? This fool gonna say it's streaker. I said, yeah, see, no, no. Uh, Rashid still seems to be put off by uh, Naya. He's still not feeling that whole thing that went down with Chris, uh, the way that he got dismissed, and the way that she just seemed not to care about him anymore after he didn't answer the question the way she wanted it answered. He thought it was still messed up. So he still ain't feeling her. He ain't forgot, just like Denise never forgot about that drink that Rashid did. <laughs> didn't get for her he ain't forgot about this whole chris situation calfani does bring up denise and some of the feelings of jealousy that she had towards adriana and how he's not really good with that he doesn't like a woman that's not going to be secure in herself and he doesn't want any drama he ain't, you ain't about to be telling me what to do all the time now he ain't really feeling that um i can't remember if jay had anything to say or not it, it my memory fails me on that um of course, Anthony, I'm worried about Anthony because he doesn't have any truly strong connections. I really wanted it to work for him and Denise because Calfani, it's not that I don't like Calfani, but I feel like I'm waiting on the other shoe to drop with Calfani. I feel like there's something there. And in a couple of episodes, I'm going to be like, aha, I knew it. He narrowed it down to the women who need to have the discussion. It's Denise and it's Naya. Now, this is Denise's second time in this little block. So um, let me tell y'all something. If I'm about to get eliminated, I'm coming in like Denise. Because baby girl was looking good. I said, yes, ma'am, this is how you get eliminated. If you're going to get eliminated. She didn't. Um, but she sits down and she has a conversation with Jay where she pretty much answers all of the questions that Jay never an never even had the opportunity to ask. I don't know what was wrong with Jay. He couldn't get his words out. Denise was like, okay, so I need to be more confident. Okay, so I need not to do this. Okay, so I need not to do that. And Jay was just like, yeah, uh, right. I said, what y'all getting? Don't, he fired. Don't let him do this anymore. So Rasheed sits down with Naya and it's the same thing. Me and the guys, we've been talking and just based on your behavior and based on the whole situation with Chris and how everything went down, they've pretty much decided that she is not ready to love. And he brings up the fact that Chris was real hurt by the situation because he always talked like he was ready to like she was the one like he was ready to really do right by her and she was just like well yeah i mean that's 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 kind of bad you know that's what did she say rasheed brings up the fact that the way that chris talked about her like she was the one like he he really liked her he was ready to do right by her and naya was like well yeah you know it does kind of go like that because it's a lot of women in this house and you know when you snag one of the baddest thing yeah you probably are gonna feel like that you probably are gonna feel some type of way i was just like wait 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 what is going on here? This is a not my girl's moment times 20, okay? All flags on the play. I need all all assistants, all the women join around. We need to talk to her. No, ma'am. Then she goes on and on about, you know, how she was one of the baddest women in the house. And then when Rashid is trying to tell her that she wasn't ready to love, she gets up and she just like, whatever you about to say, you can say to the couch. I'm cool. She take her microphone off. She put her glass down. And she was like, because if you say it, that would be messed up on your part. No, it's going to be messed up on your part. But not sitting there and listening just like everybody else had to. You are not a special sunflower. Nah, yeah, I know you think you are, but you're not. And let me tell you something. All of that talk that she was doing about her man coming to pick her up and how she was, um, it's they lost and they missed out on snagging one of the baddest. All the women in the house are attractive. So I'm not really sure why she thinks she the only bad one there. All of those women are attractive. That's number one. And number two, a bad attitude can take your, uh, your attractive level down ever so slightly every single time. Then you talk about your man coming to pick you up. Ain't no man. I don't even know why people was falling for that. Because if she had a man in Atlanta, she would be in Atlanta trying to get them eggs fried or fertilized. She would not be over here at the Ready to Love house trying to see what something else, see if what was going on and see if she could find something else. Not if the relationship over there in the Atlanta was that strong. And then... 
Um, she gonna say that she the prize. And ladies, let, let me tell y'all something real quick. Okay, I'll, let me just put it to you plain. Being cute and having a vagina does not automatically make you the prize. What makes you a prize is when you are a whole person who has done the work internally on yourself and you are ready to be that partner to somebody, the partner that they deserve and the partner that you deserve to be to somebody. You know, you don't wanna come into a relationship effed up. That's what makes you the prize, okay? Having a vagina and being cute don't make you the prize any more than having a penis and uh, being a man make you a leader. All right, you got to do the work to be talking all these titles and whatnot. So, yeah, y'all, I was disappointed in that. I was disappointed. Y'all let me know what y'all thought, though, about the episode. Um, Denise, get it right. I don't want you to be at the bottom again like this. And uh, we're going to see what happened on next week. Y'all like, comment, and subscribe, honey. Not my girls. Not my girls.